Hello and welcome back to the Attribution Marketing Channel by LeadsRx, where we help businesses, brands, and entrepreneurs get more out of their marketing and advertising campaigns. On today's episode, we have one question. Did you check your email? Did you open it? Because Apple thinks you did. In this video, we're gonna break down everything that's coming with iOS 15 and how that will impact your email marketing campaigns and what you can do about it. Let's get started. As you may know, Apple has really made it a point to include privacy as part of its ongoing mission. So you've seen tons of updates from Apple over the past few years where they continue to make it harder to track their users and defend the privacy of their wonderful ecosystem of customers. iOS 15 does not deviate from that plan and it has a major update specific to how Apple is going to treat email opens. One of the biggest updates that's recently been announced that is causing a lot of grief for marketers is what Apple is calling the mail policy protection. So what is this new policy? Let's read the screenshot directly from Apple and what they've included in this year's presentation. Mail privacy protection works by hiding your IP address and loading remote content privately in the background even when you don't open the message. This makes it harder for senders to follow your mail activity. So what does that mean as a marketer? It basically means every single email that gets delivered to an Apple device, to an Apple Mail account, will be marked as open. They are going to go retrieve that content, download the pixel, whatever else you've packaged with that email. Apple's gonna go get on behalf of the user whenever Apple wants, and it's going to hide the IP address and hide that in the background, which basically destroys the marketer's ability to determine if they opened it, when they opened it, what IP address they were on, when they did in fact engage with that email. So it's really gonna disrupt email marketing that goes to Apple Mail accounts and Apple Mail users. Let's break down some of these stats to figure out how big of an impact this is really gonna be. So some of the data that's been published by Apple has basically indicated that these changes are slated to affect iOS 15, the iPad OS 15 and the Mac OS Monterey and the Watch OS 8. That means basically everything across Apple's entire lineup of products will be protected by the mail policy protection that they are releasing with iOS 15. We look at some of our vendors and other software tools like MailChimp or SparkPost that puts information out and we determined that nearly 40% of all email is gonna flow through the Apple Mail app. So that means Roughly 40% of the emails that you send that go to the world's best customer base, which is Apple users, are going to be obfuscated. You're not gonna know what that open rate is. You're gonna lose out on some of those metrics that you used to rely on in the past. So what are you gonna be able to do? You should really prepare for your numbers to fluctuate widely during the iOS 15 rollout. Not everybody will install the software right away. Not everybody's gonna opt in, but over time, Apple is essentially gonna force this out on everybody, and so you will see those numbers start to deteriorate. If you're looking for stats on the other inboxes, maybe you have a higher proportion of people that don't use Apple Mail and that'd be fine, you can check out the Litmus Client Report for 2021, and that'll break down all the stats for all the major clients that people use to open emails. Again, Apple is what we're focusing on here. If a large proportion of your customers or prospects are using Apple Mail, this is absolutely gonna affect you. So what can you do? Let's break down some action items of what you can do to prepare for this change, which is definitely coming. The first step is that you wanna set your expectations early. You wanna change what metrics you're looking at. Make those changes now so that before the change comes out, you can start to have a benchmark to relate everything else against. So if you're getting 20% opens and 2% clicks, let's ignore the open metric for now, focus on the clicks and start configuring your analytics and the way that your business operates to focus primarily on those clicks, which you still will be able to track you're gonna lose some insights into the open rates. So you need to stop trying to optimize for opens and instead get your focus further down in the funnel and optimize for those clicks. You wanna go through and identify everything in your marketing tech stack that uses open as some type of automation or metric. So it might be you're creating a remarketing list for everybody who opened an email but didn't buy, or you're using Google Analytics to track a conversion event for an open. You wanna get rid of those right now because before you send bad data into the machine, you wanna make sure it's nice and clean. Otherwise, you're gonna be optimizing 
for the wrong information. All of a sudden, one day you'll see that email with subject line B got triple the open rate of the other email. That might not be because of the subject line, it might be because of iOS 15. So you wanna make sure that you can standardize your KPIs for a future state and not wait for this change to come and catch you off guard. You can also take some steps to run some reports to find out if your users are using a particular user agent when they engage with your websites or your apps. Doing so will allow you to potentially filter out other marketing initiatives, other conversion points, knowing that those folks using the Apple user agent might not behave in the same way, you might not have the same data set on them if they are to convert. So you can use some logic and some automation there to say, if Apple do X. You wanna go ahead and start to tag your user base, your customer base, with the level of engagement today. Meaning, while they are still able to open emails and you can still track it, let's get some emails out and start to tag the user that they're the type that does open it. Maybe they get a tag in your email marketing service or your CRM that's frequently engaged, but you wanna get that tag on them now because if you don't tag them now, you're not going to be able to in the future. Similar to tagging your users as highly engaged or tagging the ones that open all the time, you wanna take that one step further and also tag folks who typically click on your links or take your calls to action. That's even more valuable than an open. So if they're opening today and clicking, you wanna get that tag that says they're likely to open in the future, but that they're even more likely to give that click. Basically, the more that you can tag up your user base now with the data that you have available to you now, the better your marketing will be in the future when some of that data goes away. Although email marketing is really a tried and true channel and likely still will be in the future, your ability to get insight and data into it is going to change with iOS 15. So you might wanna to start to transition into maybe some other channels that can still be as intimate, but still provide that marketing data. That could be SMS, that could be in-app messaging or push notifications, anything else that gets you even closer to the customer but isn't subject to Apple hiding that marketing data. There are other channels out there. The email marketing is still going to work in the future, but you might wanna supplement it with something else that is a little more personal that reaches them right on that device that's typically SMS or in-app notifications. Content is king. It is king, it has been king, it always will be king. So focus on the content that you're sending because if you have a great subject line, they're likely gonna open it even if you don't know. And if you have great copy, they're likely gonna click. So instead of focusing on an open rate, let's go ahead and retool our mindset to focus on getting that click, getting them out of email land, onto your website, into your mobile application, and using your product and service. If you guys are using any sort of tricky mechanisms or some rich HTML in your emails that go to Apple users, some of that might not work. A lot of times people will say, here's a countdown timer. The sale only lasts for 12 hours and the countdown starts when they open it. But remember, Apple's opening that email on behalf of its users in the background when you're not paying attention. So the countdown timer is going to open up and maybe be already at zero or maybe not fire at all. The point is that some of that dynamic behavior that's triggered right when the user opens it is obviously gonna go away if Apple's opening it on their behalf without them even knowing. Last but not least, let's focus on your ratios. Oftentimes, marketers will look at total emails delivered, total emails opened, total emails clicked, and total conversions. What you need to do is start to reevaluate those ratios and reconfigure them in a world where opens goes away. You can't be trying to get more opens, which then leads to more clicks. You're gonna miss that step. So you need to start optimizing now for what gets you more clicks use that metric today while you can still measure opens because the methodology to get more clicks will work in the future. And so if you can figure out what levers to pull now and how to configure those ratios now so that the marketing works in the future, you're gonna set yourself up for success. One of the ways that marketers are able to track email marketing performance is with a marketing attribution tool and by properly using analytics to track all of this. So if you're looking to learn more about how you can continue to leverage email marketing in the future, regardless of these privacy changes coming from Apple, click the link below and sign up for a complimentary demonstration of the LeadsRx attribution software, and we'll see you on that demonstration. Until next time, this is the Attribution Marketing Channel, signing off.